Let's go All right. Uh, my name's Mark or Mookie, if you prefer, from uh, the Independent 88.5 FM here in Southern California. Love I don't that know if channel. I, Love I that channel, Mark. Do you? Do yeah, you? I do. Are you Gina? kidding me? A lot of my friends listen to it all the time. They're like, when you come down, turn it on. So I do. I tell you, we were playing a lot of the song Club Zero for a while. Yes. Yes. Cool. You know, um, we get new music from the Go-Go's. You know we're going to play it. We're here with Gina Shock and uh, Kathy Valentine, two of the uh, two of uh, two of the Go-Go's Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, which is amazing. I was just thinking to myself, I don't think I've ever interviewed a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, maybe some Rock and Roll royalty. But um, well, well, now we're royalty and we're Rock and Roll Hall of Famers and we, you have the fucking badass rhythm section. Uh, we do. We have the, the best that rhythm makes it section, all happen. Uh, arguably, it happen. arguably the best rhythm section who just okay. performed uh, in Cleveland for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Amazing. Yeah. Um, it's been said the Go-Go's the most successful female rock and roll band of all time. And I'm going to read this, which keeps popping up on the Internet whenever I do a Google search on the Go-Go's Yay. first all female rock group in history to write their own songs, play their own instruments and reach uh, the top of the Billboard charts with a num- number one album. That's amazing. That is trailblazing. Um, do you ever sort of, I, I imagine with all the stuff going on right now, you kind of have to look back and sort of pinch yourself like, wow, we did that. Well, I just can't believe that there hasn't been, um, there haven't been more women starting bands. It's such a numbers game, you know, there needs to be hundreds if not thousands more so that we don't hold that title anymore i mean i i would think by since 1981 there would have been lots of all female bands having number one records so uh part of our message is to you know get out of your bedroom where you're shredding your guitar or playing your drums and go start a band and get out in front of people i was going to mention that you could say that we've made some progress in recent years and um you know i was gonna i was gonna talk about the grammys a little bit i think it was the uh, in the best alternative rock performance category or something like that it was all females it was uh, phoebe bridgers Brittany howard big thief Hyam. i know i'm forgetting somebody else but really that's project yeah, or that, pro- that, progress that was, yes it is that, there's some amazing women performers and musicians out there, tons of them, but a lot of them aren't starting all female bands and maybe mm. it shouldn't matter, but I like it. You know, there's yeah. lots of old guy bands. So well, we got the Linda Lindas, you guys, the Linda Lindas are definitely yeah. pushing forward and uh, so proud and happy for them. Yeah, there are quite a few that I, that I think are very promising. So do you see a little bit of yourselves in, in bands like the Linda Lindas? Oh my gosh, absolutely. I, I was in LA a couple of weeks ago and spent the weekend with them and their family, their parents. Um, and their parents were like, yeah, well, we were coming to see you guys play um, back in the early eighties. And now we bring our kids to see you play. We were watching you, now we're bringing our kids to see you. And the parents knew everything about the whole punk history of, of the Go-Go's and the whole punk scene back in the late seventies, early eighties. And they have completely educated their kids on that as well. So the kids know everything. And it was really cool to talk to, you know, the 11, 10, 12, 13 year old kids that know everything about the punk scene, all the bands that were happening back there. Really neat. I love that. I had a similar conversation with Billy Idol, who, you know, um, you know, has a brand new EP. And I told him that, you know, you've got Billy Idol fans in their, um, you know, 50s and 60s. But now a, a whole a whole new group of uh, of music fans are now experiencing, in, you know, Billy Idol music for the first time. My sister, who's a few years younger than me, saw him perform at some festival here in Southern California. And all she was she was just raving about the Billy Idol performance, which is amazing, you know. Um, it all sort of comes first full circle. And I saw that you will be performing with Billy Idol a bunch of dates in 2022, uh, which is super cool as well. Tell them about it, Kat. Tell them. What? Oh, yeah, we're doing a, a tour in England. It's been it'll be the first time we've been there in a long time. It's it's funny because for all our success in America, there was something I mean, England like so 
loves American music in so many ways, but there was something about our brand of being American and the the timing that we just never really broke big in England. So uh, this is going to be really fun because we're going to play the largest venues. We have some very devoted fans there and they've sure not been do. able to, we have fans that fly to America to see us. Um, so it'll be awesome to, to get to play big places in England with, with um, with another band that is, you know, from the same era and yet not just confined to that era. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the past year um, or so, there was that Showtime documentary, which had been getting some amazing reviews, uh, released some new music, you know, the song Club Zero, the first new music in 19 years from the Go-Go's, <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, of course. And uh, I just got word that... Um, Locally, the Pasadena Playhouse is running uh, the, the Head Over Heels show uh, featuring yeah. music from the Go-Go's. And that's been described as a, a nonstop dance party. Uh, there's so much going on with you all right now. Um, Kathy has, is a published author. Um, the book is available, All I Ever Wanted, a rock and roll memoir. The book came first and then the documentary. Was the documentary inspired by the book, you think? Oh, no, no. The, the documentary was ongoing. It started before COVID. So COVID kind of put a, a little cramp in the works. And my book I'd been working on since 2016. And um, no, it, it, that was just something that we'd been approached many times for for miniseries, uh, biopics, documentaries, and it never felt good or right. And this one was close to not happening as well. And it was only when the producers brought in Allison Elwood as a director and we met her and we felt like we could trust her to tell our story. And boy, was that finally a really good decision. <laughs> that she, she got us. She was smart. We had the same politics. She, she uh, rescues animals. It was she felt like the sixth go-go. It, it worked really, it meshed together really beautifully. That's incredible. And of course, um, speaking of books, there's a, uh, there, a, a picture book. Is that what we're calling it? That uh, Gina just published, it, Made it, in Hollywood. It started out as strictly a photo book, but then it sort of evolved into lots of words, 30,000 words later. Um, I had no intention of doing that, but um, when the publisher came back and said, well, I'm trying to, to write something. I, I was, I thought I, I'm not a writer in that way. I don't know that I can do it, but after looking at those photos and the words started pouring out, it was easy to write about that particular photo about what was happening during that particular time in our history. Right. It, it came out pretty easily, pretty fluid. That's incredible. Um, you know, I, I only read books that are um, autobiographies. Um, you know, I'm it. not really reading fiction or anything like that. I like reading about rock and roll. Me too. Um, you know, it's just fascinating. And sometimes I'm, if you're like me, you probably went through some phases in your life where you just became so intrigued by a particular band or era, you know, yes. and then you you watch all the documentaries, you read all the books, you buy all the albums, you know. Um, it's just a, a snapshot of history, really. So what is some of the uh, some of the things in that picture book and which you'll be showing at Mr. Music Head Gallery in Hollywood real soon, um, which is I don't know if you've ever been there yet, but it's it's the most impressive collection of rock and roll photography I have ever seen. Yeah, you know? I've been there. Sam is a lovely fellow. And uh, uh, I actually went in and I bought stuff immediately. <laughs> that he had hung. <laughs> That's incredible. What what did you get? I bought this incredible photograph of James Dean and Natalie Wood. Um, uh, a moment uh, in between takes or whatever. No, maybe probably on a day off where they're just sitting in the grass and she's laying on her belly with her like her hand up like this on her on her on her chin and he's bent over rolling a cigarette and it was just a very candid moment. And I love this shot. It's uh, them being just them, mm -hmm. not actors, not nothing for the camera. They, they weren't even aware of a camera being around. And I love that sort of stuff, that very spontaneous thing that, you know, mm -hmm. unrehearsed moment. Um, so I wound up buying that. And I've also bought a, um, a photograph of the who in, in uh, I think it was um, Roger Daltrey's, um, 
That's <laughs> it, where they're all sitting around hanging out. Bless you, Kathy. Bless Valentine. you, Kathy. Sorry. Yes. I tried not to. The more I tried not to, the more it came. That's okay, babe. Anyway, that was the other photograph that I bought. And so, you know, not only do I take the photographs, I buy them because I love it. I love it. I love seeing my favorite bands. And Gina, where movies. where are you right now? Like I'm in physically. my I am in my office in San Francisco right now. Amazing. Love the records, uh, the art on the walls, walls of books and CDs. And Kathy, where are you? I'm in my little mini uh, home studio in Austin, Texas. Oh, cool. Um, so did you relocate to Austin, Texas for music or? Um, it's my hometown. And mm -hmm. uh, around 2006, I was uh, I had a three year old daughter and to be honest, I kind of just felt like I had, you know, was cashing in my chips. You know, I'd moved to L.A. when I was 19 and I'd found a great <laughs> band. I'd realized my dreams had come true in that city. I spent, you know, my young adult years. And then I eventually ended up meeting a great guy and had a, having a struggle. <laughs> and I just kind of felt like, all right. I'm cashing in the chips and I'm going to go live in Austin for a while. And now my daughter's in college and I'm kind of open to living somewhere else, you know, so I got my antenna out. But yeah. your daughter's in college and you're out there living it up, baby. Yeah. So I, I'm, um, I love Austin. It's a great town. I love LA. When I'm in LA, I feel at home, you know, that's where I spent, you know, all my twenties and thirties and the clubs and, you know, in different scenes that come and go in, in LA. Mm -hmm. It's a great, great, I love it there too. Yeah. But, Do you but, feel the same? Like now when I go back there, I have a much better appreciation of that place. Like when I was living there, I was like, oh God, I can't stand, I need to get out of here. Now when I go back, I'm like, I kind of like LA. It's all right, you know? I like it because there's so much that has changed, but there's so much that has stayed the same. You know, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that I can still see Okie Dog and, you know, just different institutional places that are just still there but then there's other times i'm like oh man that's gone i, I, I drive around. sunset boulevard blow, blows my mind everything has changed there i drive around like a looky loo tourist i'm like driving like 10 miles an hour <laughs> looking at everything me too babe i do the same thing oftentimes i'll be driving down sunset or something thinking what this place must have looked like in the 1980s <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's I remember it so well. I mean, I just remember oh, yeah. when I first moved to L.A. Did you do this, Gina? When I first moved to L.A., well, me and my friend, we were from Texas and we didn't know that it wasn't OK to drive around with a six pack in the in the front seat. That's what you did in Texas. Everybody. So we would drive around cruising up and down Sunset, listening to Rodney on the Rock and just different than different rate KMET, KLOS, listening to all the stations, drinking beer. It was awesome. Well, I drove around in Baltimore with six pack in the car all the time. If you get pulled over, they just say, give me that beer. They dump it out and they say, go home. <laughs> not not like that in Los Angeles, though. No, no. no although I've, I've gotten away with a couple of things really? uh, in, in my younger year. Yeah, just yeah, uh, young right, and, and right. incredibly stupid. Yeah. Um, so you all could have, um, you know, been at peace with what you've done in the past in the rock and roll world. And if you decided to go ahead and step aside, um, I feel like that would have been uh, OK. But no, there's a book. There's uh, there's all these photographs that are emerging now, all of a sudden, you know, there's new music, the documentary, all of this stuff. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, any favorite venues uh, back in Los Angeles that you um, you remember? What? I just did a, an event um, like one of these rock fantasy camps and it ends up at the whiskey. And every time I'm in the whiskey, it just brings I mean, that's where I played my first shows with the Go-Go's. That's yeah. where I met Charlotte at an X show. And that's where I saw countless everybody from, you know, the Ramones to Elvis Costello to yeah. Blondie. I just saw it's just like the whiskey for me. And that's where we did one of our very first comeback. Sh not I don't know what you call it, reunion shows after we broke up. We really? did a show at the West. Oh, yeah, the Jane Fonda thing. When we got back, we, we oh, right. When Jane Fonda asked us to, to uh, play for this group, put to get a green initiative on the ballot, uh, that was in 1990. We we uh, did a warm up show there under the name Clam. And um, 
So the whiskey holds lots of memories. I'm so glad it's still there. You yeah, know, thank God. I still get bummed when I go to the corner of Crescent Heights in Santa Monica and there's no Starwood, you know, and I try to remember yeah. what did it look like? Where was it? But uh, yeah, the whiskey is always, and the Roxy too. We we got signed at the Roxy, you know, that's where Miles came and, and yeah. decided he wanted to sign the band. What about Mario? Rest his yeah. soul. Wonderful guy, man. Wonderful, wonderful. Handsome. Man. Silver Fox. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. The uh, I can't wait to get back to the clubs. I've just been, you know, at home in sweatpants, working on the radio station, you know, working remotely, if you will. Um, but the, we'll, 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 I'll get out there eventually. I do love the Roxy. I think it's just a great hang. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, yes, I miss. And it's just the sound system there's really good at the Roxy. I think particularly good there. And mm -hmm. in later years, I I still love playing. I mean, I. I even when I'm not in a go-go, I'm playing in bands, and I've played a number of times at the Viper Room, and it's awesome to play there. Oh, God, I've been there in ages since I'm we glad played it's still there, going. Kathy. I'm, still, I'm glad it's still going. Since we played right? there the last time. Wow. Yeah, I like all the clubs that we've been a part of. So to get the band back together to play a bunch of these shows, you know, um, going on the road with Billy Idol in 2022, was oh. it an easy decision? Did it take some convincing for some of the bandmates? Oh, you don't even want to know. You, I mean, we are all on different pages. It's like, it's hard to explain to fans and stuff. But what, what I try to say is, when you're 22, 20, 21, 22, and your ambition and your direction and your passion and your motivation is equal, and it's all pointed in the same direction, it is such a force. It's like you, there's no stopping it when a band has that unified. And then you get older and you have homes and lives and loved ones and pets and responsibilities and projects. And all of a sudden, it's like your energy and passion and drive and motivation aren't all the same amount pointed in the same direction. So it can be frustrating. And the best thing that we, Gina and me and all of the Go-Go's try to do is to do our best to try to find a little sliver of time where everybody can do something and mm -hmm. is able to and and you know be grateful for what we do get to do would you agree with that gina absolutely because it's tough it's tough to get us all on the same page we're we're spread out all over the globe and so i heard someone was living in new zealand no, but uh, Belinda was in uh, Bangkok for a while and then just oh, went right, to right. Uh, Mexico City about a, three weeks ago or so. Three or We're four in weeks. four time zones, two countries, three states, <laughs> um, several zip codes. Right. <laughs> we are um, bad. We're nationwide. We're worldwide. Kathy, you were talking about your child and um, I have a three and a half year old here at home. And it's just been the, the most magical experience. Was there a period of time where you were excited to get your child acclimated sort of to live music? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been I mean, it's funny things that I'll never do for myself. Like I will get on the phone and go, you got to get me tickets to Miley Cyrus. You got to get me tickets to Katy Perry. Like I would just like just like pull out anything to like pull out the stops. Yeah. I, I love taking her to concerts and I love like, you know, I was like trying, I was, you know, propaganda in her from uh -huh. the get go with Ramones and Blondie and, uh -huh. and one of my private moments, my proudest moments was when she like, and I would always like say, find the one, find the one. I was always teaching her to recognize auto tune. So she's had a pretty interesting musical upbringing and, um, yeah, I, I love taking her to shows and she's really proud and, and loves that her mom is a go-go and loves all the band. She, she adores so Gina. Cool, Kath. It's she so adores cool, Gina. That she actually gets it and, uh, and embraces it, you know, the way that she does. Yeah. I love that. That girl's going to, she'll be doing something. So you didn't discourage her from getting into the music biz. Well, she's not in the music. She doesn't want it. She loves to play guitar and write songs, but she's a communications major. Mm -hmm. but it's funny with your three and a half year old. It's like she was at the rock hall and looking like this beautiful young woman. And I'm just like stunned by what she's become. And then in the morning she was in my hotel room and I woke up and she was asleep and she looked like that little four year old baby uh. face. And I just like, you know what, Kathy, your girl has turned out so 
beautiful. She, Audrey's really beautiful. Well, she's kind and smart and funny as hell, too. So I'm really proud. That adds to the fucking package. Let me tell you that. Good guy. work. That's the so, bow tie, you know, in the package when you tie it all up in a bow. That's it. Because, uh, you know, Audrey is gorgeous and super duper sweet. But one thing, Mookie, you're going to love, too, is like your kid is going to be keeping you fresh and turning you on to music. Like I I mean, my daughter is where I began my love of hip hop. And I've been like catching up on 40 years of hip hop for the last couple of years and just like Slick Rick, all of it. Just like going way back at the beginning and just really I just find it so exciting. And I thought LL Cool J's performance mm -hmm. the other night was just a showstopper i was it was you know charlotte and i looked at each other and went thank goodness we don't have to go on after him oh my god this was him please don't let us have to go on after him because he fucking knocked everybody out man and bringing out eminem and j-lo oh, oh whoa god. what well, what did the go-go's performance look like were there any special surprises the special surprises that we were we were able to walk on stage <laughs> <laughs> No, we wanted, came out there. We wanted and to borrow their uh, wheelchairs and like yeah, wheel right. each other out. Did, I think we did a great job. I think we were all very, very nervous. But when we got out there, we played our hearts out, and people loved us, and they stood the whole time and danced, and it was, it was just another great go-go celebration that I couldn't believe that all these folks just love us the way they do. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we had to keep reminding ourselves that, you know, we might not be as like slick and and like big time as so many people but we're us and nobody else is like us and we're bringing something special to the show okay. and we had to kind of keep you know affirming that to each other keep perspective right yeah yeah i mean it, it, trailblazing punk rock pioneers um it's really incredible um to see the the upward trajectory all of these years with the go-go's gina I, I don't know we did we touch on this before who who's who's on screen with you right now that's penny my little angel <laughs> my little girl penny <laughs> named after penny lane or something um what, what did, no it wasn't penny lane it was um what did I name her after Penny, 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 Penny? Give me a moment with that. <laughs> oh, I know what it, it was. Uh, um, James Bond, Money, Money Penny. Oh, there you go. Yeah, 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 Money, yeah. It's just Money Penny. It was James Bond, Money Penny. Money Penny. And then Kathy's got that pooch right there. He's a mess. And oh, who's Tux. that? I love Tux. My, my daughter saw me at um at, in Cleveland. She goes, "You look like Tux." <laughs> <laughs> that means you're just sort of disheveled and what the fuck. <laughs> tux is the cutest. I don't to look like Tux. Oh. How do you? How are you both um sort of consuming music these days? Are you streaming? Are you are you buying vinyl? Are you listening? You listen to the radio? I'm, I'm doing all of those things, actually. I get in the car. Uh, I mainly listen to Bollywood when I'm in the car. Um, when I come mm -hmm. home, I've been playing a lot of vinyl lately. Um, and I do a little bit of streaming, but I, I really am getting back into playing, doing my vinyl, pulling out all my records and, you know, getting back to the source, getting back to where it comes from. Uh, um, I, I'm a big fan of vinyl. I, when I, I'm not going to go on, but when I moved to California in 79, I brought every bit of vinyl with me and I still have it in back to me. As wow. you can see, I think. Oh, there you the vinyl, go. Right. Wow. But I have still, I have, I have tons of vinyl and all my CDs and DVDs up there. It's all here. It's like, I'm not, that's my history. I can't get rid of it. It's sort of like why I save my photographs and stuff because it's, it means something to me. It's important mm -hmm. in my life, you know? What about you, Kathy? Are you streaming? Are you uh, playing CDs? No, I, I don't play CDs. Um, I don't have a good stereo, so I haven't gone back to, to vinyl much. Um, to be honest, I, I tend to like just pull up YouTube when I want to hear something or sometimes learn something. Um, and then I don't do a lot of Spotify, but you know, I have, I have Spotify and I have, um, Apple Music, and a lot of times I'll just like quickly add something to my library or, 
you know, mm-hmm. pull up something. Or and I also have the Sonos system, and sometimes I'll just like pick a a station that says like play me stuff that sounds like that's anything like Kendrick Lamar or something like that. You know what I mean? Like where you, those things where you can just pick an artist and they'll just pull things that are in the same realm. But right. then I'm always running over like, oh, this is so good. What is this? You know, and trying to figure it out. Well, I know in Austin, they have KUTX, part of the university out there, that uh, yeah. non-com radio station. I think they would they would flip if they knew that a go-go was listening to their radio station. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I work with KT. I've done a lot of things with them. Yeah, they're, they're good people over there. Um, I guess like-minded radio station. So yeah. you see it. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. What was that? Do you, know, do you know Jody Denberg? I don't. I've met Deidre a couple of yeah. times and their program director whose name escapes me. And, you know, some of these radio yeah. conferences, yeah, you know. I know all those people. Cool. How cool yeah. is that? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's cool. It's uh, the AAA format as far as radio is really a tight knit community for the most part. Sweet. Nice. Nice to hear. S- speaking of that, um, tight knit communities, you see it in the underground hip hop scene in Los Angeles. You see it with the sort of alt country and Americana scene, um, as well as the punk rockers in town. Um, it, it, everybody has each other's back. And everybody sort of runs in the same circles, uh, playing the same venues. And there's a lot of support. W- was that the same back in the 80s in Los Angeles? Were bands supporting each other? Were there, were there rivalries? What bands did you befriend? And what bands or artists were there rivalries with? It was, as far as I can remember, it was an incredible scene. Everyone was very, very supportive of each other. You know, there were a group of us, uh, all pals, and, you know, at, say, 8 a.m., the bags would be playing at the Hong Kong Cafe, 10 a.m., uh, 10 p.m., X would be playing at the Starwood, and we'd just get a whole pack of us, we'd all jump in cars or 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 uh, taxis, whatever, and we'd run from one show to another, just supporting our friends, and it was a beautiful scene back then, because Nobody had any money and we were just there doing all we could. And that was to just show up, you know, just show up. And that's what we did. It was a really very, very cool scene. Like I'm so happy that we got to experience that because, you know, I don't know how that happens these days, but it was magical and it was real. It was real. Also, um, I mean, I wrote about this a lot in my book, but it was very inclusive and yeah. like, I yeah. was, I mean, I loved punk rock, but I wasn't necessarily, you wouldn't look at me and go, oh, look at that scary punk rocker. I mean, <laughs> right. I, I like, but yet I never felt unwelcome at a punk rock show. And, you know, I love the diversity because I grew up in Austin where, you know, I might start out, you know, at a cover band playing Bowie covers and then go to like a country band and then go see a blues band. Like it was just really about music. And I found it very similar in, in LA cause I'd go see like, uh, you know, see the weirdos. And then you might go see Levi and the, and the rock hats. And the then you blasters the yeah. Band. Then yeah. You, yeah, the blasters, rootsy stuff, really punky stuff, arty stuff, you know, and it was just such a, a great scene. It really was. I love the inclusiveness and the diversity. That, that, that's the major word inclusive because everyone was included there were no outsiders. We were all there to support each other. And, uh, you know, it was sort of us against the world and uh, worked out really pretty good. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, again, we're here with uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, a couple of members of the Go-Go's. I need, you know, I don't have much time for anything these days, but I'm telling you, I got to get these books um, and, and, and read them figure out some leisure. If you like a memoir and rock stuff, I think you would, you'll be missing out if you don't get these books. No, it wasn't there. Kathy's is very in depth and really mine's a bit more surface than Kathy's, but mine's a bit more about the photographs, but. uh, And the band, this is a lot about the band. You definitely go into your personal stuff. Yeah. It's very much a go-go's story as well. Yes, it is. I, I, I sat down and went through Gina's book twice. Just because I enjoyed it so much, just page after page, turning, 
and uh, it's a it's really fun. And mine's a quick read. It's like I I have a fast pace, and it's a, a, a it's kind of it never stops. Things it just you pick it up, read it, and you're done. Right. So, How much name dropping is involved in the book, Kathy? And uh, did you have to like give somebody a heads up and be like, hey, I'm you know I'm talking about you in my book. I hope that's okay. It's funny. I was very conscious of that because I don't like name droppy books. And yet some of these people, you know, and where I finally decided is like, is this something that this relating this kind of helped move the story forward? And yes, I did ask everybody, you know, I, uh, I asked, you know, I took the people that I wrote about, I, I asked them and got their approval, but it's, you know, just if it was something, if it happened, it happened, you know, I'm it's not going to like, do what makes yeah. sense for the story. You're not going to yeah. not include something, you know, that you yeah. got to do what makes sense. Yeah. So I, I did name check people, but not in a gratuitous way and not in an exploitative way. I mean, we mm. did have to leave Obama out for a little bit, but other than that, <laughs> Obama well, and uh, Oprah didn't make it in. Yeah. Obama and who? Oprah. Oh, really? Well, you could. We didn't you know could, that. You could have let me know they're in my Rolodex. I could have just given them a call <laughs> yeah. for you. Why right. didn't we know that? Why? I often wonder when when Obama puts out like his Spotify playlist. Like, I wonder if he's really listening to those indie bands, or if he like has a focus group, being like, "Oh, oh these maybe bands are hot right two. now." May, maybe one or two like strikes his fancy, but I'm sure he doesn't listen to all of them. Oh, I bet <laughs> his daughter is turning him onto all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah Kath. There is that. Yeah, um, Gina. So I'm looking at what I believe is the front cover of the book. Yes. Um, and I was wondering if you could sort of take us through this picture. Where was it taken? And Let's see. Um, let me see. Do you have it? I do. Yeah, it's the one Yay! where you're, you're. You can't see it on the on the Zoom screen here. Um, you're you're in a tiara. Hey, Everybody's in a book. tiara. You There's you a need the book. Smoking a cigarette. Yeah, yeah, we were bad. <laughs> right. um, that was a <laughs> shot. Um, Ginger Canzanari, our manager at the time, was uh, following us around, snapping shots during that whole vacation video shoot. We did it at the Charlie Chaplin uh, Theater, stage uh, theater uh, on La Brea. And um, it had been going on for when you did doc, uh, when you did videos, it would go on for 12, 14, 16 hours sometimes, uh, whatever it took to get it right. And um, I think it when that photograph was taken was probably like 14 hours in or 12 hours in, something like that. And we really needed to get out of that space and just get outside, get air and feel human again. Um, and that's what we did. We walked outside. We were all really tired in those crazy S tutus walking down La Brea and God only knows what people were thinking that were driving by, but Ginger kept snapping. Um, it looks and posed and it wasn't like, it no. looks, like, it right. looks like, okay, you let a cigarette hang out of your mouth and you yeah. look over here and it was completely just natural. It was spontaneous. It was just, as it happened, it was just happened to be sitting there. Kathy just happened to have that cigarette dang out of her mouth. I just happened to turn around and, you know, do that smile click. Um, and it's a I brilliant was, photo. Huh? It's a brilliant photo. I think so. When I was looking through all the stuff that kept coming back and back and back and back until finally it was like, mm, that's the one. I think that's really the one. And how many photos do you have that did not make this, uh, this photo exhibition? Hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. There's there, there. I mean, I could do a Kathy. I could probably do a book too. I think, you know, um, honestly, there's a lot, there's a lot to choose from. And it was so hard to pick out what you think people are, are going to, um, what's going to move them. What do you think they're there? There is going to excite them. Uh, what, you know, because I, I don't know, it's hard to be objective because every one of those photographs means something to me. And that's why I needed to have someone help me pull take ones out and say, yeah, this should go in the book. No, that one doesn't make as much sense. People will, you know, respond better to this one and that one and uh, quite a process, but I certainly could do another one right now. Um, but there are loads and loads more of photographs, especially uh, I have a lot more photographs of us with other celebrities. But for me, I felt like I don't, you know, I don't want this to be a book of the Go-Go's and celebrities. You know what I mean? It's not what it's about for me. I want more 
behind the scenes, wacky, like personal things that weren't sure. Set up. Yeah, because a lot of those photos with the celebrities, it's just like it's not like there's anything meaningful. It's like you're all in right. place at the same time. Yeah, yeah. You're all mm-hmm. together. Someone takes a picture and then you go, bye, thanks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's not mm-hmm. like there's much story mm-hmm. behind them. Speaking of celebrity, there was an after party at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, wondering how, how long you guys lasted at the after party. Not long. No. <laughs> hey, we lasted till about four. Oh, I didn't. I was, uh, I was hey, there. Kat, about- you left with me, didn't you? <clears throat> yeah, I left with you. That was at four. No, it was at three. No, Wendell's saying it was at four. No, it was three because I packed Hold for on. an hour and I went to Wendell, bed. What do you say? 345. You must have stayed longer then because I was up in my room packing from three to four. Anyway. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, whatever. Let's get in a fight. Well, an, an after party till 3 a.m. sounds very rock and roll to me. Yeah, it was pretty fun. rock and roll. Yeah. It was rock and roll for sure. If you all, well, yeah. If you, if you all had to do it over again, would you change anything? Oh, yeah. Like Is what? that right? What would you change? Oh, I would have liked to have a little bit more maturity and compassion and the ability to hmm. communicate and, you know, maybe just kind of like Gina and I love this band passionately and we were holding on so tight, you know, because we loved it so much. And uh, it was devastating to to lose it and and really difficult and everything turns out fine. But I think I, I, my personal disappointment is that we weren't an ongoing band like you two or something that just, or like the Foo Fighters, how they keep playing for years and years and, and years. I would love to do that. We'd love to keep playing oh, because you know, we, we're players, we're musicians. We want to be out there playing all the time. Unfortunately, a lot of the uh, some members of the band don't feel that way, which yeah. kind of uh, breaks our hearts. But it's you know tough. what? Kathy and I always want to be playing. So anybody's looking for a rhythm section, we're out there. I mean, we right? Love to play, man. Would would band practice have to be in a Zoom? No, no. Fuck no. Everybody's uh, living in different oh, places. It's fucking bad. They'll have to all go to LA like the rest of the world, and we have to practice all in one room, and that's what's going to happen. But it is a drag because you know what? It's tough to get everybody in one space. But I can tell you one thing: Kathy and I always feel the same way. We like to practice a lot, and we like to play a lot. And, yeah. Uh, you know. So I think not everybody, think, not everybody I think can do that. I think there's things that we could have done differently along the way that maybe it didn't end up like this. You know, I would, I, whatever, but you know, it's all, it's all fine. It's like, I I would even feel stupid for just even complaining about anything. I mean, Mm -hmm. I've had such a blessed life. I mean, who gets to do this? Who gets to, who gets to meet Paul McCartney? Who gets to like, you know, who gets to go out and have people singing your songs and knowing it and happy to see you. I play in bands where there's 40 people and they don't care whether you're up there or whether you were in the go-go's it's like to get mm-hmm. to do it is such a, such a privilege and, and an honor. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, I feel like a new band um, could be in the works, but it, it seems like you have a few more things to do before you get to that point. And again, you've been incredibly busy. The past year has just been what a blessing it's been for the Go Go's. Um, I just, I, I, I really, thank you. Yeah, I, I really can't believe it. And we just love you so much. And of course, obviously, we claim you as our own, as Angelinos. You know Um, because of the rich history in town and um, can't say enough great things about you. I'm going to pick up those books um, and I'm going to share your music with my daughter. Of course, there's music in the household like 24 seven. And, um, you know, maybe she, she'd want to emulate, emulate the go-go's one day. Who knows? That'd be great. That'd be great. (laughs) Yeah. What was that? Said I bet she I bet she loves it. I mean, we play shows and we have we have kids out there just going nuts. So it's I wouldn't be so contact our manager Art if anything comes up and you want to, you know, bring her. I tried to get you into our studio for a performance when Club Zero dropped, but you know, someone was in Bangkok and it just didn't yeah. work out or whatever. But you never know, maybe down the road. Like the logistics are nightmarish. I don't know how art keeps together. I really don't. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Very good. That's a uh, rock and roll um, Hall of Fame manager right there. Uh, anything else to touch on before we kind of wrap it up and carry on with our days? I just think for me, all I want to say is that I and I feel like the band are in a very grateful place. Uh, I, and I also say that in the same breath, uh, it's about time. There are others such as Susie Quattro and the B-52s that need to be inducted like now. Um, but once again, it's never too late. I hope I hope they get in next year. And we are we are very grateful and feel very privileged to be getting this honor. And wow, it's like the Lifetime Achievement Award, huh, Kat? Mm hmm. Yeah. No, I can't think of anything to add. It was nice talking with you. And thanks for having us on. Yeah, it was good. Um, uh, thanks again. Uh, well, the go goes. This is the independent 88.5 FM and 88.5 FM dot O.R.G. We're going to tweet at you. And I don't know if you're doing Twitter, but we'd appreciate that retweet you guys once this is published. OK, sure. OK, OK. 88.5 FM, KCSN, and KCSN HD1, Northridge, Los Angeles. KSBR and KSBR HD1, Mission Viejo. A service of California State University, Northridge, and Saddleback College. Member-supported public radio. Streaming on the web at 88.5 FM.org.